security guards on the lookout for predators. It hit and bounced off. Yeah. That's why we prepared too. Yes. Okay, what's up to one okay? This one. Eh? Yay! That one is okay. Pull it, pull it. Still got it. That him. one? Yeah. Uh, what? Still yes, seeing. yes, yes. It's still hanging. Yeah. It's still hanging. You can see it. Eh? Yeah. It's still hanging. Well, since the dart was fired, the amount of zebra that have been moving on has really increased, so it's difficult to keep an eye on our target, but uh, Dr. Morris thinks that it should be down by now, so we'll have to keep our eyes peeled. There's one down. Yes, oh. this is the one. That's the one. It's galloping. Eh? Dreaming. It's like dogs do. Taking the blood sample to check for disease is a race against time. The anaesthetic affects the zebra's breathing and temperature, so it has to be revived as soon as possible. It's not completely unconscious, so covering its eyes helps to calm it. The sample taken, Dr. Morris injects a fast-acting drug to revive the zebra. This is the most dangerous part of the process. When they wake up, they can be a bit grouchy. Well, we've all been there. Usually it takes effect very fast. Very fast. This one right is coming up. But it continues to gallop. Yeah. Yes. 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 Be careful, please. Yes. Careful. Careful. Yes. 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 <laughs> this is the kind of procedure I've acted out dozens of times in Wild at Heart, but it's the first time I've nearly been trampled on for me troubles. They went that away. He seems to be perfectly happy back in the fold now. I think that's, that's him making the noise. Probably telling people he just had the weirdest dream. The Serengeti vets devote their lives to protecting wildlife. But not far from their patch is a project where the roles are reversed and some extraordinary animals are saving human lives. Most people come to Africa to try and get a glimpse of the big five of lion, leopard, elephant, rhino and buffalo. Now the animals that we're about to meet may be slightly smaller in stature, but in terms of heroism they don't come any bigger. This is the African giant pouched rat. And this program trains them to sniff out TNT explosive and help locate landmines. They're helping solve one of Africa's biggest problems. At the last count, there were an estimated 45 million landmines on the continent, and every day people are maimed or killed by them. So who are we going to uh, put to work today? Survivor two and uh, three. Survival. Yeah, it's a good name. Mm -hmm. Each rat is given a name by its trainer. There's a Vin Diesel and a Catherine Zeta-Jones somewhere out there sniffing for explosives. These chaps are double the size of normal rats and their natural behaviour is to dig and sniff. They have a great sense of smell and are highly intelligent, essential qualities for mine clearing. I'm taking survival through basic training steps. The rats begin by moving up and down a strip of land with tiny amounts of TNT buried in it. When they identify the explosive, they're given a food reward. So we found the ball and we got a click then. What, yeah. what does the click? And the click comes a sign of a word. Right. They can detect over 40 types of explosive. There are now 35 of these rats working in neighboring Mozambique, a country with two million buried landmines. Survival and I are preparing to sweep for real landmines, but I'm finding that one of the most hazardous bits of the exercise is just fitting the harness. It's not biting, it's just uh, teething. Yeah. 
I've survived crash landing in a forest full of wild elephants and narrowly avoided being trampled by a zebra only to be set on by a giant rat. It's going one better than the famous Richard Whiteley and the ferret. I've actually got, got scars. But it's all in a good cause and there are no hard feelings as I take him out to work on actual mines. The rats are so light that unlike other animals who've been used in demining, they never set off a mine by treading on it. The rats on this program have helped prevent untold suffering, but their sensitive noses are lifesavers in more ways than one. They can sniff out disease as effectively as they trace explosives, and these little fellas are the latest weapons in the battle against one of Africa's biggest killers, TB. Explain to me what Mario is doing at the moment. Mario is trying to indicate uh, tuberculosis positive samples in the sputum. The samples are in this cassette here and they get placed underneath? Yes, underneath. And how does he identify the TB? The rat sticks the nose under the hole that goes directly to the port to the positive sample. Right, and it gets rewarded after that? Yes. And there's no danger to them at all? Uh, there is no danger because these samples have been activated. So it's safe for the animal and the tendrils. The rats in this program can identify between 500 and 600 samples a week. And they've been so successful that their role in detecting other conditions, such as epilepsy and AIDS, is being looked at. These animals are doing better than a lot of the more expensive technical methods can do. Uh, the rats themselves seem incredibly happy. No rats have ever been blown up and none of their trainers have ever been injured by any landmines. Uh, they don't contract TB themselves and all they do is help. It's just taken my breath away. I doubt if I'd ever see a giant African pouch rat from the balloon basket but there's no better place to see game than in the world-famous Serengeti Park. It's such a highly protected area that we weren't allowed to fly our balloon, so we decided to hitch a ride on one of the commercial balloon flights that operates in the park. Our pilot, Mohammed, turns out first Tanzanian to hold a balloon pilot's license. We're in good hands, but Robin is showing every sign of being a terrible backseat driver. Stop interfering. Yeah. It's not your balloon. Oh, but I want to play. <laughs> We've got the uh, river coming up. I'm quite keen to see if there's any Lovely. inhabitants. We're flying over the famous Grumetti River, which flows into Lake Victoria. Dawn is the ideal time to spot the wildlife that lives in and around the river. Animals like hippos are out foraging at this hour before the day gets too hot. A hippo just going behind the bush there, trying to hide, which is not easy for a hippo. I see you. They're definitely camera shy. About a thousand feet, Captain? In a laundry basket. Yes, it does seem like a ridiculous idea when you say that. It does. Let's get in a laundry basket yeah. and go up to a thousand feet. <laughs> miles and miles and miles. We've seen an astonishing array of wildlife, but now it's time to land and there's a snag. Every likely spot is teeming with animals. Finally, our pilot makes a decision. See that big head of buffalo there? 
Okay. I don't care where I'm going to land. You're the boss. <laughs> I've, um, I've done that many times. I've had this uh, pride of lions and I wanted to land and passenger thinks maybe it's a problem. You bet. And I tell them, well, it's not a problem. We're approaching our landing, they just run away. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen to that, Steve. We need to worry all that time. With those, with those elephants? They just run away, yeah. I'm still not sure I believe him. Those kind of holes we find them on the ground. Must be 100. A bit less than 100. A bit less. 98. <laughs> Let's not be <laughs> The easiest <laughs> way is you count the legs and you divide to four. <laughs> That's clever. One, two, three. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, I wish I was this good. You can stand up. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Very good. Well, I certainly couldn't have done any better. I don't think I could have done as well. Brilliant. Brilliant, Mohammed. Top Fair marks. Designer. Fantastic. Having seen this incredible terrain from the air, I want to find out about the people who live around the park. So I've arranged to visit a nearby Maasai camp. There are almost half a million of these semi-nomadic people in Tanzania, spread out on the plains around the Serengeti. I'm going to meet Perikaperni, who's invited me to his village in a place called Ngata Kitty. Found this, found this little fella on the road. Like most Maasai, his survival depends on his livestock. He's heard about our balloon trip and has asked if we could take him up to check on his animals from above. The Maasai welcomed me with a traditional warrior dance, the jumping dance where your heels aren't allowed to touch the ground. With my Tanzanian guide, Noel, Parakaperni takes me to meet the village elders. The most important animal in a Maasai's life is the cow. How many cows you have is a measure of your wealth and status. But it's a constant battle to protect